Hi everyone and welcome to video number two on Weimar Germany and Nazi Germany. Video number one we looked at the legacy of the First World War, how Germany was affected in 1918 towards the end of World War I and we saw that Germany had problems. Now January 1919 Germany held its first election. The Kaiser, the German king, the German emperor, the autocratic ruler had gone. Germany was now trying democracy. And there was a, an election, January 1919. Vote for me! Vote for me! No, vote for me! Well then, what were the results of this first democratic election? Well, the public were interested. 82% of the electorate voted. So that's a quite a high turnout. But the outcome is very, very interesting. Here we have, ladies and gentlemen, the election results of January 1919. Now, let's have a look. Here are the parties. Now, I've just put the initials down. Don't worry, I'm sure your teachers will explain these parties. The important thing, though, look how many different parties there are and look how many seats they are all winning. The most popular party, Ebers, Social Democrats, the SPD, 163 seats. But look at all the other parties. If they get together, they can beat his total. DDP 75, ZP 71 and so on and so on. So you see, the German people, the German electors, were actually quite divided. They elected a lot of different parties to the first Weimar government. And we will look at that in this video, because some people say that was good, and some people say that was a weakness. I'll explain both sides and you can decide. So there are the results of this first January 1919 election. Now, once the election has been done, of course, they had to draw up a constitution. Now, what we mean by constitution is a system so that Germany could be governed. The Weimar Constitution. At the top, was the president. So the Weimar government, from the election result, they've got two main issues to deal with, two main topics. Number one, draw up a constitution. And then number two, deal with this peace treaty that's going on at the end of World War I. Well, the rest of this video is all about the constitution. Video number three, coming soon, is all about the peace treaty. So we'll look at how they fared dealing with both of these important issues. Right, constitution. As I said, the president is at the top. Now, the president was Friedrich Ebert. What were his jobs? Well, here's a couple. Number one, he chose the chancellor, a bit like a prime minister. Number two, He's commander of the army. Number three, he can call elections and also dismiss the parliament, called the Reichstag. I'll get to that in a minute. And number four, in times of emergency, he could implement Article 48, an emergency. I'll talk about that later. So there's the president. He was elected every seven years. He's at the top of the Weimar Constitution. Underneath, we have the Chancellor, chosen by the President. He was the head of the actual government. He chose the ministers, the cabinet ministers. So if it's Ebers in charge here, the cabinet will come from one of some of those 163 members of parliament. OK. So the Chancellor is very important, a bit like our Prime Minister. Then, of course, we have the Parliament. Now, in Germany, it was the Reichstag. In 1919, 
there were 421 seats, 421 members of parliament. By the time Hitler takes control in 1933, that had actually increased up to 647. But for now, 421. They're elected every four years. What did they do, these members of parliament in the Reichstag? Well, they made laws. They controlled taxation. So they are important people. President, he's sort of separate. Chancellor, Reichstag and the members of parliament. There was another house of government called the Reichsrat. Now, that's not as powerful as the Reichstag. The Reichstag made the laws controlling taxation. The Reichsrat, they were more advisory. They could say to the Reichstag, look, we're not quite certain that that's a good thing. They could give advice, but they couldn't really go against the Reichstag. They had 55 representatives of the 18 different areas, local areas, a bit like in Britain, we have the counties, for example. So they represented the local areas. They discussed laws, but they didn't make them. So that's the constitution. That's how it was set up. The voters, remember, vote for me, vote for me. Well, Germany was quite democratic, considering that it had always had a king or a Kaiser. In 1919, men and women aged 20 or above could vote. That was unusual, as we'll see. Now, I mentioned something earlier, Article 48. The president had this power only in times of emergency, public safety, law and order. The Reich president could suspend the constitution and he could take power into his own hands for the good of the country if he thought it was necessary. Article 48, important that you know that for the future developments that we'll cover in later videos. So there we have the Weimar Constitution. It was quite simple and I've laid it out there for you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have to consider what were the good things, the advantages, the strengths of the Weimar Constitution, and what were the bad things? What were the disadvantages? What were the weakness? Well, let's start with the strengths. Hop to, hop to, hop to. Oh, look at that. Wow, I'm feeling very strong. I'm showing my strength. What were the strengths of the Weimar Constitution? Well, I'll tell you now, so uh, you won't have a big weight. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I'd like to say no more jokes, but who knows? I might sneak another terrible joke in. Right, get on with it. The strengths of the Weimar Constitution. Number one, as I've hinted, it was democratic. Here in Britain at that time, men had to be over the age of 21 to vote. Women had to be over the age of 30. So Germany was more democratic than Britain. That's got to be a good thing. Article one said we got to be more democratic. Second strength, remember that article 48, in times of emergency, a strong president to, can take control and lead the country in a strong, unified way, hopefully making good decisions for the country. Strong, independent, powerful. That would have to be good in a time of emergency, would it not? Third, the Reichstag is involved in making the laws. Parliament is involved and Parliament has been elected by the people. Before this, the Kaiser and a small group would have decided, is that good or is it better to be more democratic? Is democracy a strength here? Many people would suggest that. The Weimar Constitution gave people rights, the right of free speech, something that we have here today and we consider is very important for our freedom. They gave the freedom for religious belief, 
something again that we have and we consider as important. So you can see that there are strengths. Finally, their system in elections was based on proportional representation or PR. Now, I'll just explain both systems. Here in Britain, we have something called first past the post. Imagine you are in an area, constituency they are called. We'll just call it area A. There's an election, 20,000 people vote. 10,001 vote for party number one. 9,999 vote for party number two. In our system, party number one gets the MP and party number two gets nothing because they have won the race. They have been first past the post. 10,001 votes beats 9,999 votes. That is our system today that we use. In Weimar, they went for proportional representation. And what that means is the number of MPs, the number of members of the Reichstag was down to the percentage of votes. So let's say the DDP got 75 seats. The SPD have got more than that, almost double them. If they got twice as many votes, they get twice as many seats. Down here, classic example, the DMVP, 44 seats. USPD, 22 seats, because they have got double the votes. Now, that is proportional representation. And the strength of that is that smaller parties have got a voice. They can put forward their ideas because they have got seats in the Reichstag. It's given everyone a chance to be represented by a member of Parliament. And that's a strength. So some people say. So there are the strengths of the Weimar Constitution. But as ever in history, ladies and gentlemen, on the one side we have the strengths and on the other side we have... Oh, oh, I'm so weak. Oh, oh, oh. Weaknesses. Weaknesses. So, again, same again. I'll tell you now, so that uh, you don't have to wait a week. <laughs> that is the last joke in this video. Sorry. Now, what were the weaknesses of the Weimar Constitution? You've got to remember, Germany was not used to democracy. It was their first attempt, their first experience. They'd always been used to being ruled by one autocratic, powerful leader, the Kaiser. So their first attempt was good because it was trying to use democracy, but they're not used to it. And in many ways, they were not very efficient. They didn't really know what to do. So that might be a weakness. Number two, the president, has he got too much power? Remember Article 48, he can rule without the parliament. He can rule without the Reichstag. Now, if the Chancellor is relying on the President all the time to say, look, use Article 48, we've got to get this through, don't have the Reichstag, don't have the people, is that weakening people's idea of democracy? If all the time you're having to use the emergency power of one dominant leader, the President. Now, by the 1930s, Article 48 was being used was that weakening the idea of democratic government? Have a think. Another possible weakness. The army generals, now they had helped set up Weimar after World War I and all the problems. Many of the army generals still supported the Kaiser. And many of the army generals would have welcomed the return of the Kaiser and strong autocratic rule. So they might not be very supportive in the long run of Weimar. Is that a weakness? 
some of the judges. They might oppose some of these new liberal modern democratic ideas. So they also might not necessarily support Weimar. If, if your army and your judges are opposed to a way of government, is that way of government strong? Have a think about it. And then we come back to the idea of PR, proportional representation. Remember I said, many people said it's good because everybody has a voice. Everyone can contribute to the discussion. But in some ways, people said that is also a weakness. Because to rule effectively, you've got to make compromises. You've got to make coalitions. The SPD could be defeated by all of these. So the SD, SPD would have to uh, unite and combine with some other parties. And then those other parties might say, oh, well, we're not going to support you unless you do what we want. So rule by coalition sometimes leads to argument and instability and no clear direction. And between 1919 and 1923, just four years after the war, there were nine coalition governments as they kept falling out and making new friends to try and rule. You've got on one side almost you've got the communists, the left wing, and on the other side you've got the right wing nationalists. Both want totally different things. Can that be effective and stable government? Or would it be weak? Have a think. And the final point, the final weakness, if you like. Weimar emerged from World War I. It emerged from all the troubles of the German Revolution, all the riots, riots and strikes and protests. So the army was involved in setting up Weimar. Would that mean that Weimar would be unpopular? with the German public. Or well, maybe if things started to go wrong in Germany. So there we have the German government from the election result, 1919. The constitution is set up. It works. Yes, there are some strengths, but yes, there are some weaknesses. What would happen next? Well, now they're in this video, I said they had two big jobs. Number one, set the government up and set the constitution up, which they've done, as I've tried to explain. And task number two, deal with the peace treaty from World War I. And that peace treaty, known as the Treaty of Versailles, wow. Is that going to cause the Weimar government, this new government, some problems? Well, the only way to find out is to have a look at video number three, which is coming soon. The Treaty of Versailles. Very, very, very important. So that's Weimar. It's set up. The Constitution's there. Now let's see what they actually did. Hope it's been useful. I'll speak to you soon. All the best now. See you later.